Hey, thanks for joining me this week on the Book Legion. My name is Tizer Evans. I'm going to be covering this week the Challenger Sale by Matthew Dixon and Brent Adamson. This is the Book Legion Podcast, where we review thought-provoking books to give our Legionnaires the knowledge they need to dominate the next level of their life. So Matthew Dickinson and Brent Adamson were two guys that were working for and with the corporate executive board, which has now been purchased by Gartner, uh, who is, if you don't for a moment them, a huge consulting agency. So corporate executive board, or what they refer to in the book as CEB, is also a consulting, consulting firm. And they went out and they just do a tremendous amounts of research on how to make businesses better. Where are the fallacies? Where can we improve? What are the trends? Where are we moving to in the future? And that's really how this book came about. I was surprised I hadn't heard of the book. It's been around for over 10 years, but recently in the last three to four months had been recommended to me several times. So I was anxious to read it and it did not disappoint. So I'm gonna cover my top three chapters they're very long chapters, so I will try to get as many key points as I can uh, without giving away too much, so you can go read it yourself, but let's jump into that. So chapter two is the first chapter I'm going to cover, and it's the new model of high performance is what they talk about. So really, you know, what the, the book is starting to do, again, CEB is a research firm, so they went out and they wanted to find out in 2008, 2009, how come there was this subset of sales reps that were just not only meeting their goal, but far exceeding it. So they went super wide across all verticals, interviewed thousands of sales reps. Again, it could be B2C, B2B, and really found out what are the characteristics and traits that this one subset of sales reps had that distinguished them to being so much better than all the other reps. So they break down the categories into five different types of sales reps. You've got the challenger, which is what the book is based on, the challenger sale. You've got the lone wolf. You've got the relationship builder. You've got the hard worker. And you've got the reaction problem solver. And so they go through all the different traits. So you can start to identify if you're a sales leader or someone who's running a sales organization, the different key traits of the people within your own organization. For me, it was very easy to be able to pick out the reps that I have, who is who. And ideally, they found that 39% of business close was done by the challenger. So they started to dig in what makes them so different and what makes them so special. So they found that there's three traits that they have that they do very, very well. Is they're able to teach, they're able to tailor, and they're able to take control. So they, in the later chapters, they get into why this is so prevalent. But it was very interesting to think about the five different types of reps. And it starts to make you really evaluate your hiring practice because sometimes it's hard to identify who's going to be a relationship builder, who's going to be great at customer service, but they may not be the best salesperson. Or you might have the lone wolf who could be very good at sales, but they're not always maybe going to be best fit for culture because they're the lone wolf and they do things their way on their own terms um, and necessarily it isn't always going to fit into the dynamic of a team. So it was really great to get some perspective on so much research on the different types of reps and what you should be looking for is characteristics and traits. And of course, they're going to blend a little bit, but it was a great chapter of just identifying who's on your team and some of the great traits you should be looking for when it comes to hiring great salespeople. So the next chapter I'm going to be talking to you guys about is chapter four. Chapter four is why insight matters. So the book does a great job of kind of talking about the lineage of sales, how it went from very transactional based way back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And then as we started to progress into current day, it got a lot more solutions-based selling. And you still see a lot of that today where a lot of sales organizations haven't started to evolve into insight, right? They're still based on the solutions. They want to talk to you about your pain points. But really what the book starts to talk about, and, and, and this is just a great point, is that you should already know your customer's pain points. If you're calling and in the discovery phase, you're trying to assess the problem, you're not going to be sharing any, providing any more value if they're going to be just telling you what their problems are. What the book really wants you to start to do is look at how do I start to provide insight? Because the moment that I can start to get my prospect or my client to have those aha moments, and it talks about key phrases like, I've never thought of that before. 
That's interesting. No one's ever told me that before. Then you start to understand that you're going beyond value. You're providing insight, something that's new. This is where you know the challenger becomes a teacher, right? They're teaching them something new. They're tailing their pitch that's custom to uh, their current prospect. And then they're taking control of the sale. So those are the three T's, right? But th this chapter is why insight matters is because when you're just identifying problems that people already know that are problems, like what are we doing? You're not, you're, you're actually not providing any value. You're not be able to differentiate yourself from all of your competitors that are coming in with the same pitch. You kind of just get lost in the noise and it becomes either based on two things, a popularity contest or becomes based on price. None of what you want to do because it's always going to be a losing a battle and the, the, unfortunately, the buyer is going to fall to usually the lowest common denominator, which is going to end up being price. Even if they do like you a little bit, you aren't able to distinguish yourself or have any type of differentiation between your competitors. So the book does a great job of breaking down why insight really matters. All right. So the last chapter I'm going to talk to you about is chapter seven, which is taking control. So we talked about chapter four, why insight is really valuable. And we've talked about what the challenger, the three pillars that they have as far as key characteristics and why they're so important, which is tailoring, teaching and taking control. So now the book does do a deep dive in teaching and tailoring. I really want to cover taking control because the point I really liked about is that unless you take control early, it's going to be a real uphill battle. 20% of people shop just for the sake of shopping. What they do is they say they've already kind of really made up their mind of who they're going to go with. But out of due diligence, they want to go ahead and send out some RFPs and shop to make sure there isn't like a crazy low rate. But in their mind, they kind of already know who they want to go with. So if you aren't able to take control early and be able to provide meaningful insight and differentiate yourself early and start to take control of the sale, you're going to fall to the lowest common denominator, which is going to be price. And if you're falling to the lowest common denominator of just price, it's always going to be a losing battle. You're going to have a terrible closing ratio and you're never going to have the success you want. So this chapter really talks about how you have to start to make a difference right from the get go. You have to those people, especially those people that 20 percent where they are just kind of, again, just doing their due diligence. And unless you're able to differentiate yourself from the competition early on and take control of the sale, you're never going to get the sale. So one of the things that they do really well, they're able to take control of the sales are very comfortable about talking about money and they're able to push people. Uh, a little bit out of their comfort zone. Now, this isn't to mean that you be confrontational or you be combative, but it is also being firm. And the book uses a great example, and I want to read it to you guys. This kind of tactic seems to be a hallmark of sales high performers. One of our recent studies revealed that while sales reps start their sales efforts by mapping out stakeholders within a customer organization, core performers then move on to what would seem like the le next logical step, understanding the needs and mapping out solutions against those needs. But high performers do something very different. They extend this part of the sales process by digging into those individual stakeholders, varying goals and biases, as well as business and personal objectives. As we discussed in the tailing chapter, they map out not just who the key stakeholders hold on are, but what these stakeholders care about and why they care about those things. By doing this, the challenger is in a much better position to be able to take control right from the beginning. So I just, you know, again, that kind of brings the whole chapter home about what they're trying to do, take hold from, from the beginning. And the reason I brought up about talking about money is because it also gives an example in there. They're talking about a, a contract. It was like, hey, if you're willing to invest 200K, are you willing to invest 200K in us so we can invest in you? And that's a very bold statement, right? Are you willing to invest the money in us so we can invest in you? That pushes people out of their comfort zone a little bit. But what it does, it gets them talking about why they maybe wouldn't feel comfortable or why not able to commit. You know, I did a whole uh, video on another YouTube channel about using an if then statement, right? If I do this, then will you do this? And when you do that, you get clarity on a yes or no. And when you get the no, it allows you to enter back into the sales loop and maybe retake control of the situation or provide more insight or clarify in your insight that they didn't really understand versus your competition. So there's that differentiator there. So, Overall, again, these chapters were very long, typically 30 to 40 pages, so it's very hard in a 10-minute video to break down how impactful the book was. Um, usually for me, I always have a highlighter when I'm reading a book, and it's, you know, maybe 
every two to three pages, I do a couple highlights. This was like, I was having four to five highlights on every single page. I mean, it was a very dense, factual-based book. It's one that every single person on my sales team that read it said it reevaluated the way that I look at selling to people. And I think that we're going to get a huge lift um, on my sales team this year because we read this book. So absolutely, I recommend a Challenger Sale. It's top three sales books for me all time. Um, again, what we talked about, there's five different types of sales rep. And the one that they really hone in on is the Challenger because they're able to teach, tailor, and take control of the sale. The three T's were the linchpin of the book. And they go into great detail. I mean, the book's over 200 pages, really about these three principles and the characteristics of the challenger and what they do so well and why they're all such high performance and crush their sales goals and metrics. So absolutely get the book. I will post the book. Uh, it'll be linked in the show notes below. So you can just click on the link and, and go buy it. Um, I really appreciate you guys uh, listening. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, share with friends, family, other sales colleagues. Again, I do book reviews once a week on books that will be a sales book, leadership book, spirituality book, health book, wellness book, personal development, you name it, anything to help you elevate. Uh, thank you so much, my legionnaires, and I talk to you guys soon.